podcast. This is Amy Olson of Be Do Knit, and this is my third podcast. So I had a pilot at the beginning or the end of last year after Vlogmas. I started with Vlogmas, and then I did a pilot episode with my girlfriend last August and aired it for the first time at the end of December. And then I had my first... Um, episode or my next episode in the new year and this is number three so welcome I'm glad you're here and let's get started so today I wanted to just catch you up on my whip and my whip is actually a design in progress I have other whips but there has been no progress made whatsoever on those so um I won't be talking about those but I might just remind you what they are uh but to start with oh and then after my whip I'm going to be talking about everything I want to knit in 2024 so that is going to be pretty fun I have way more that I want to knit in 2024 than I can actually do and you probably can relate to that but I'm going to do the best I can and we will see how it goes Okay, first things first, I have my whip in my buku bag, and this bag has been so amazing. I've talked about it before. I love it so much. Look at how wide it is. Nice, huge square bottom, and it's just super, super wide. Beautiful leather straps. There's leather straps on the side, so you can tie it in the middle, but as you can see, my project is getting pretty big. So... Here it is. I'm not going to show all of it because I have to keep something, you know, secret for the launch. <laughs> but I can talk about this first section, which I wound up binding off. So this is the first part of the wrap. And here is, here's the other side. It is gorgeous. As you can see, I have not woven in the ends, but look at that halo, if you can see that. It is just so pretty. So what happened is that I got to the end and I really loved how the I-cord looked at the end and it was appropriate for the wrap. But then when I went back and looked at my cast on uh, I cord, it was, it was really tight. You guys, it was very, very tight. So I actually took a scissors and I did some minor surgery and I just cut, I cut that I cord right off. It was torture. Cause I was going to rip the whole thing back. <laughs> needles and the damage done. I was going to rip the entire thing back and I just decided, you know what, before I do that, I might as well try this, you know, thing to fix it because why not? So I, I went ahead, I just started on one edge over here and I started cutting and I cut, cut, cut that I cord right off to the very end. And then I went back into because I as I was as I was going along when I would get to the end of a row and I'm like this is not enough to do another row of this color and I knew I was gonna have to just like cut the yarn put it away put it aside all those little scrap yarns I put back in the advent calendar bag for each day and so I went back to all those little bags and I did a new I cord cast on starting with color number one and then working my way across and maybe I'll put it up a little closer. So starting with color number one, working my way across to two, three, four, five. Um, and then it got brighter and brighter and brighter. And I actually love this I cord over here. I love how bright those colors get. So I'm very happy with it. I thought I was going to be super bummed, but I was not. I wound up not being bummed out. So that is the new I-cord edge. 
So yeah, that is the update on that. I'm not gonna go into any other design aspects because I wanna have some sort of element of surprise when I'm done with this thing. And I will just say I'm loving it. I think it's it's gonna be great. I, I actually, for several reasons, so that I-cord edge I thought about ripping back. I also thought about ripping back and doing, making it less wide but I actually kept that width, but just changed the aspect of like where the wrap starts and ends, if that makes sense. <laughs> It'll make sense when you see the finished product. But for now, that is my design in progress and my whip using the Advent mini skeins from a homespun house that I opened during my Vlogmas. December 1st to the 24th. So that's that, a little update on that. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Look at the crema on this coffee. <laughs> if you can see it, I don't know. It's so good, it's so perfect. This mug I got, this is a very deserty episode because I have this new backdrop here. This is a an art piece that my husband did when he was had a company called Rolu and he took a five foot wide piece of white fabric um I don't know if it was felt but it was I can't remember the material but it was a five foot wide piece of white fabric and um put it you know in the desert across the line of sight anyway I think this is a deserty episode because this mug that I got at Eccles Pottery in Bayfield, Wisconsin. I love this cup. And to me, it looks like the desert, like blue sky right there. Blue sky, like the sandy kind of deserty color below. Love this mug. And I got this at Eccles. I know I said I wasn't, I wasn't super into the rest of the pottery. Um, my last episode, there was a really modern squat the big round handle, a little mug from a young woman. And then this was probably done by her parents or whoever owns the shop. And But I do love this one. And I got one for my mother-in-law because I thought she would really love it too. So anyway, I think I got it for her birthday or something. That project was super cool. It was, it was in... I think near Joshua Tree or something, but my husband and his business partner, and then they had some interns from the local art college in LA. They all worked to lay down and unroll this fabric five foot feet wide, and I think it was two miles long. <laughs> so through the desert, it was blisteringly hot. And this, um, this artist here that's in the, that's not me, <laughs> that's somebody, uh, an artist who does this or she puts on this thing called high desert test sites and it was an art project in the desert and this my husband's piece was just one of those pieces my husband is texting me what it is <laughs> so the person in the photo is Laurel Broughton and her studio is called Welcome Projects the dress is by Kristen Dixon and her practice is called Ico Ico and she has a store in LA so if you're interested in that the volunteers were from Otis College of Art and Design. So that is the story on that. I just think it's so cool. And that white piece of fabric went past the line of sight. And an interesting story is that, you know, they were laying the fabric and it took a long time. And so it got to be towards nighttime and a pilot was going over, a commercial airline pilot was going over and saw this white line. And unbeknownst to my husband, that that piece of fabric was like pointing towards a military base. <laughs> and so this airline pilot called it in and someone called the military base and here comes this truck barreling down the desert. And they're like, what in the heck with these spotlights and everything? And they're like, what are you doing? You know, with like a flashlight, what are you doing down here? And, da, 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 da. and they asked all these questions. My husband's like, I'm an artist. <laughs> like this is not, you know, like, I didn't know. I had no idea there was a military base over there, you know, so it was a kind of an interesting experience for him and his business partner. I don't think they ever would have thought something like that would happen. But 
you never know uh, what's around the corner. So anyway, I just thought that was a fun story to share. And yeah, without further ado, I think I'll get into some knitting. I don't know, honestly, I'm trying out a new camera. And then I also have my iPhone going and the camera has a flip screen thing. So I might be looking all around. Just ignore me. I'll figure this thing out at some point. So um, I was looking up a pattern because one of the patterns that I want to make, I it's from Boylan Knitworks and I am just blanking on the name all of a sudden. So I'm going to look that up. Okay, so knitting plans for 2024. As you know, I'm working on my brioche wrap. I'm also updating all of my past patterns to be more size inclusive. Um, my most recent patterns are size inclusive and the first three to five, I can't remember, need to be updated. So I'm working on all of that. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is, so I want to make the Zweig sweater. So the yarn I bought to make that sweater, and I cannot for the life of me remember the yarn that she used, but I will look it up. I bought Hedgehog Fibers. Um, this colorway is Film Noir, and I'm going to use for the black color, I'm going to use Graphite. So yeah, this Graphite color, and that's also a sock yarn from Hedgehog Fibers. So those are my two colors. I'm excited to, to try out that pattern. I've seen a lot of versions of it and I love, love, love that. So that will be really fun. Then the next thing I want to make is this uh, it's Angora Garnet. And this company is in Sweden and it's a Angora farm from, the yarn is from an Angora farm. I don't even know if I've ever pulled this out of the bag, but these are my colors. You can see it goes like, it's like red, pink, purple, and this orange color. And then the sweater that I'm going to make is this one. So I purchased this yarn, I think a year and a half ago or something when I was, I was really obsessed with watching fruity knitting <laughs> and I, saw this sweater and you know it was killing me because in the background by the way this is the ranonkula sweater it is by midori hirose it is knit up in pearl soho linen quill and in um tussock which is the mohair from pearl soho so it drove me crazy during this episode of fruity knitting that andrea was sitting next to um I don't know her name, but this woman from Sweden and from Angora Garnett. And this sweater was in the background, one of these two right here. And let me just focus that in. One of those sweaters was sitting there in the background and I was going crazy because I couldn't tell, like she wasn't asking her, what is that sweater? And I was going nuts because I wanted to knit it so bad. I was able to go on Angora Garnett, the website, and then just figure it out. And she's actually wearing it on the front of this little insert that came with my yarn. So, so yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah, it came with this little card. So um, this is the, the chart. And then this chart has all the little pieces of yarn off to the side. So I want to make this very badly and I can't wait to work with this Angora yarn. I think it's gonna be, I think it's really warm is what I've heard. And if you've been watching some of my videos, you know I run hot, so I'm a little skeptical. I'm like a little, I don't know, not sure what to think about how warm it's gonna be, but it does get cold here. It was negative, I don't know, nine degrees the other day. So it is definitely possible to wear this in Minnesota, I will say. So there's that, I would love to make that. I would love to make a pair of Arnie and Carlos mittens. I don't know if these are the ones that I want to make, but it could be these. 
So, you know, just a classic Norwegian mitten like this. I think this pattern in particular with the stars on it, the one came from Knit Stars. You have to purchase, it's like a, it's an online conference. So it was perfect during the pandemic, you know, to be going to a conference that is digital. And so I purchased a package and then you can listen to designers talking about their designs and Arnie and Carlos were part of this one season. And um, so I bought that season and then their pattern that they were talking about during the uh, conference, you could get the pattern for free if you, you know, had purchased a ticket. So that's what I did. And this yarn is, this yarn is Rowan Norwegian wool and in the colors Arnie and Carlos picked out. So that would be pretty cool to use. Um, and then the next thing, maybe I'll talk about the, you know, what I'm wearing very quickly before I move on to the rest of this. So this sweater is from Wool and the Gang, and this is using their yarn called um, Billy, the Billy Jean yarn. So it's denim yarn. And I will hold it up here so you can see it really close up. This is their denim yarn. And it's really comfy. It's just kind of, it's kind of like a, your favorite pair of jeans, you know, it just, it just kind of, um, I don't know, forms to your body. Like I took this out and I had, I haven't worn this since I had my big moth scare of fall 20, circa fall 2022. <laughs> and I took this out and it was like a little snug. But as soon as you put it on and kind of wear it and stretch it out and you can even just stretch it like you're, you know, just like a pair of jeans, you can just kind of, I don't know about all of you, but I put my jeans on and then I squat down on the ground to like stretch them out, <laughs> make sure they're just ready to go. But anyway, so this is the same way, this denim yarn, you just put it on and yeah, you can kind of stretch it out a little bit. And so that's what this is. This one is called, oh gosh, what is it? This is the crazy feeling sweater and I have, I have it on Ravelry, but it's called the crazy feeling sweater. And then I even made a pair of shorts to go with it that honestly, it was fun to make them, but I have never had the occasion to wear these shorts. They are tiny and they have this cute little, you know, like a cinch waist and they're pretty darn cute, but I, I just don't know when I would ever wear these, honestly. <laughs> just laying around the house, maybe knitting on the couch. I don't know. So this is the whole outfit. And those shorts, I think they're called the crazy, the heartbreaker shorts. And then heartbreaker shorts and the crazy feeling sweater. And it is crazy feeling. It feels good. So... Anyway, that's from Wool and the Gang using, like I said, the, and the colorway is called Dirty Denim. So the Billie Jean, Wool and the Gang, Billie Jean yarn and Dirty Denim. So that's what I'm wearing today. And if you want, you can wear these shorts with it. You can make those up and wear those too. So next up on things I want to make in 2024. I already talked about this a little bit, but I really want to make the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit. And I know she holds, um, I think it's Sandness Garn. I think she holds the fingering weight with a mohair for her, for the sweater, the what the pattern calls for. I saw Molly from Homespun House. I saw her version of this sweater and she made it with her indie colorway and fresh sheets mohair. Now, I got something a little bit different and this is the these are the colorways that Christy Glass used for hers. And this is I'm going to try to focus this in a little bit. This is the unicorn dust over here. And then this is the antique colorway from Homespun House. So those are pretty beautiful and I bet they'd be so nice together. 
So yeah, I will probably really enjoy knitting this. I so this is this is option number one. Maybe you guys tell me what you think down below, which one I should make. So that's the first option. And the next one, I have like 12 to 14, I don't know, balls of this. And this is the Cardiff Cashmere. So Petite Knit has another pattern. I can't remember the name of that one, but she has this color. I feel like it's called Super Orange. I can't remember the name of this color. It's gotta say it on here, right? Cashmere Classic Cardiff Cashmere made in Italy, 100% cashmere, wow. And the color is 517, but it is the most perfect red to me because my favorite color is this red that veers on orange. And this is just, this is it. This is my favorite color. When I saw that design that she had made up in this color, I was like, that is gold. So this is definitely, a contender. So if I don't make this in a no frills, the if I don't do the no frills in this homespun house yarn, I'll do it in this and then I'll find another use for this. I think what would be really pretty to do this and I saw Molly did this from a homespun house. I know I talk about her all the time. She's amazing. Um, but she does, she has a Marley shawl from Andrea Maori using something similar. So that could be good too. So there's that. And then you guys, I went and possibly you've already seen it because maybe I'll put the video in the first part of, of my podcast or maybe I'll pop it in right here. But I went to Apple Fest in Wisconsin this fall with my family. I went uh, to meet them up there. My parents live up in Bayfield, Wisconsin. And every fall they have this thing called Apple Fest. And it is so cool. There's all these vendors and there's apple everything. Apple crisp, apple pie, apple scones, apple, anything apple you can possibly think of, they have, okay? And one year when I was there, I saw, I bought a skein of yarn and I loved that skein of yarn and I was trying to find that same vendor and I couldn't find them anywhere. It was alpaca yarn and it was super soft. It was very thin, like probably fingering or lace weight, I don't know, but it was very thin yarn and it was very soft and it was black and white, like speckled. I loved that yarn so much and I wanted to go find some more because I want to put it in my Penguono by Stephen West. And so we shall see what happens there. But I was asking around downtown Bayfield, you know, to the different vendors. And there was somebody, there is a yarn shop in Bayfield, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. This yarn shop has, you know, they just have some yarn and it's in the second floor of this kind of boutique clothing store. And it's fine, but... You know, it's not exactly what I was looking for. I was kind of looking for this niche, like a local farmer who, you know, spins, you know, has alpaca or sheep or something. And then, you know, maybe dyes their yarn and then sells it at a fair. I was just looking for something special. <laughs> you know, not that, not that I have all these, I don't know, requirements or anything. But, you know, you're at a festival. You think you're going to see somebody that has some kind of special yarn with a special story. And that's what I was looking for. So I asked around and somebody said, I think there is an alpaca farm in, was it Washburn? Um, I feel like it was just outside of Washburn. So Lake Superior is here. Bayfield is up here. And then it goes Washburn, Ashland. And so right past, if you're going Bayfield and then going to Washburn, right past there is this alpaca farm. And the, it's called, um, ah, it doesn't say it on here. Okay, so this alpaca farm, you guys, it's so cool. This candle, because this wood, you know, it's like you're having a fire outside because this wood is crackling. So not only do you get this amazing, smell. Oop, I just put the, 
I just put it out by tossing it around a little. Um, not only can you smell this amazing smell coming off the wax and whatever it's made with, but you can smell the, you know, you can hear the crackling of the wood. So cool. So I'm going to put that back over there. Make sure nothing catches fire over there. But so this, yeah, this farm in Wisconsin is called the Surrey Fina Alpaca Farm. And it's in Bayfield County. My brother, my nephew, my mom and I were at, um, we're downtown Bayfield at Apple Fest. And we, we learned about this and I asked if we could go there so I could see the alpaca. It was so cool. So I'm gonna insert a video, but this is Surrey Fina Alpaca Farm. And there were all these alpacas there and you could go in the barn. They also have like this little store in the barn. It's like a farm store. And so you could buy local fresh eggs and I think at the time it was fall. So there were like mini pumpkins. I bought three mini pumpkins and you could buy some finished knitwear made with their yarn or you could buy their yarn. And then they had just like, like I said, like eggs and produce and things like that. So they had some gourds, you know, just things that were in season. But anyway, I found this yarn. And it is so pretty. It's naturally warm, soft, and strong, making it a great choice for your next knitting project. And our all natural DK weight knitter's yarn is spun in the USA using US grown alpaca and merino natural fibers. So this is 70% US alpaca, 30% US merino in DK weight. And while I was there, I wanted to buy a sweater's quantity. So I went on Ravelry quick to just look at a DK sweater. And I happened to pull up Brienne Moody um, and her, you know, cause I think she has a, like a cardigan and DK weight. And I was like, oh, about how much am I gonna need for a sweater's quantity? And so I went to her Ravelry page and the farmer who was there, the owner said, did you say Brienne? I went to school with a Brienne in Duluth, Minnesota, um, back in the day, you know, and, and she said, I think, I think she said when they were maybe up until first grade or third grade or something like that. <laughs> and so I forgot, I ran into Brienne when I was up in Grand Marais and I forgot to tell her the story, but maybe she'll watch this or I'll tell her about it. I'll just, you know, DM her. But anyway, Abby is the owner of this alpaca farm in Wisconsin, and she knows Brienne from elementary school, and she said she hasn't seen her since then, but they were like best friends, or they were friends, you know. Um, so that was pretty cool. And she also said that Betsy Bowen had just stopped by the farm and purchased some yarn as well, and she had brought up Brienne, and so that was like the first time she had heard her name in a long time, and then I come in, and I said her name too, so she's like, what in the world? You're the second person, and Betsy Bowen, if you don't know her, she has these amazing children's books. Um, there's one called Antler Bear Canoe, and then there's all these other ones, and they're very much, she does woodcuts, so the images on the pages are these woodcuts, and that she does and they are incredible books for kids if you don't know about them i highly suggest starting with the abc book called antler bear canoe so good so i'll pop up an image here and show you the the front cover of that book but she has a studio in grand marais grand marais minnesota is just this tiny tiny artist town it's really close to the grand portage reservation is like on the very northern part of Minnesota and about 30 minutes 45 minutes probably 30 minutes um, south of there is this little town called Grand Marais and it is a special town with tons of artistic people in that town they have like this folk school up there that a lot of people go to um, and yeah, just really amazing creative people in that town. So that is what I have to say about that. And Brienne is one of them and Betsy Bowen is another one. So 
moving on to uh, other things I want to make in. I want to finish this whip. You saw it already, but I shouldn't show you in a bag. But this is my Pearl Soho linen quill yarn that I bought to make. And if you want to see the finished product, Jackie Rose made this scarf in the same exact colors. I got my inspiration from her after buying several hundred skeins, no, I'm just kidding, of linen quill. But this is uh, the poppy colorway. And here, you know, I've shown you that before. It's old news, but I'm still working on it and I plan to finish it. My friend Gina is making the same one and you know, her birthday's coming up. Maybe I should just whip out hers. I don't know, I can't even finish my own, but I, you know, it's a big birthday for her, so I should just, I should just make it for her. Maybe I'll do that. I'll offer it up. She might want to make it on her own, so it could be that she doesn't want my help. So we will see. Anyway, so that's that, and then I have dreams of making a color work, whoop, wow, a color work sweater using these colors that I purchased at Dappled Fern Fibers in Grand Marais, Minnesota. This is lichen and lace yarn, and it is really pretty. Um, yeah, this was one that I salvaged. Yeah, it was part of my yarn moth scare, but I, you know, it was funny. I, I looked up online and it said, that you can put yarn in the oven at a low heat, like 220 degrees, and bake off any larva or moth eggs or whatever, and then put it in the freezer and freeze the yarn in a plastic bag. So I did that. I put it in the oven, baked it, like I think in like two rounds or something. You take it out, cool it, then bake it again, cool it, and then put it in bags and put it in the freezer. And then you should be sure that there are no moths on it. So, and then I put it in plastic bags and put a little silica packet in there and good as gold. So, yeah. so this, I forgot to say, this alpaca yarn, I am going to design a cardigan or some kind of sweater using this yarn. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet, but that will be happening. So I kind of have a lot of design projects in mind Another one that I couldn't help myself, I bought this yarn and it was one of those instances where you see yarn online and you think it's one color and then you get it and it's a totally different color. <laughs> I thought this, this, this yarn um, from Magpie uh, died, it's dyed in the skein spin cycle from Magpie. I'm not sure how that works. Um, if they bought... Spin Cycle bought the yarn from Magpie. I have no idea how they do this or if they are just partnering up or what, but. Um, Cause then Spin Cycle has a label here too. Does anybody know? Tell me in the comments why both of these labels are on here. Cause it's dyed in the skein. So maybe Spin Cycle got the yarn from Magpie and then dyed it again, like over dyed it. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, um, so this dyed in the skein is from, I bought it from Spin Cycle, but it's Magpie Fiber Yarn. 100% um, Southwest American Wool hand dyed in Maryland. So 300 yards, 75 grams. And this colorway is called Follow You Into the Dark or Follow Me Into the Dark. Follow you into the dark. Dun, dun, dun. Sounds like a British murder mystery or something. Um, or an American murder mystery. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to see. I don't know if you'll be able to see this color. But it's kind of a blackish foresty green. I bought a bunch of spin cycle yarn when MDK was having a big sale on their spin cycle. And they had a bunch of Dream State colors. So I bought all of these from Modern Daily Knitting. And I love them. I think the one, the two that might go with 
the follow you into the dark could be these. So maybe I will do that because this one's so dark, but it's kind of got this green tint. And so I think definitely that mustard would look good, but maybe even this one. So we'll see. I have never designed a color work anything, but I love doing color work. And so I have some ideas, but I have not fleshed them out fully yet. But I do now use an appropriate for color work um, design software. Um, and I needed to buy that in order to put together my cable chart. Is it Invisio Knit? I cannot remember. Invisio Knit may have been the first one I purchased and then I had to get a new one. Then I think that might be it. Well, I did buy some mohair so that I could pair it with this yarn because this yarn is pretty scratchy. This is a Jameson's of Shetland, but look at this green. You guys, I, I know I have a green sweater right behind me, that ranunculus, but I love this Kelly green color. Oh my gosh. To me, this is so good. So I love green <laughs> and, and I think if I held this Kelly green which is a little bit of more of a toothy, rustic yarn. If I held this with Isair mohair, I think that would make an amazing garment. So this, I might have to work up into something. I have so many design ideas and so little time. And, you know, to be totally honest with you, I love to design things and make up the pattern and think about that side of things and make the garment. Not so much on writing the pattern and doing the grading, quite honestly. There's so much that goes into making a pattern because, you know, there's the yarn and then the idea and then the making is the best part, obviously, for obvious reasons. All of you probably are like, yeah, I wanna make stuff, not. Um, the creative part is great. And then figuring out the yardage, doing the grading, doing the writing of the pattern. I don't mind writing the pattern, but like the grading, <laughs> the grading is grading on you. Um, especially it's a math challenge that I never thought, you know, it's funny. People would say, you might need this in your life. You know, all these math problems that you would do. And you know what? You, you do need it if you're going to be a knitwear designer pay attention in your math classes <laughs> because I mean, it's probably too late for most of us that it would be watching this, but that math really comes in handy. If you're trying to write knitting patterns, I used to, um, support, you know, the head of data sciences at a big corporation. And I would joke around with him, like, can we just create some kind of, I don't know, intelligent system to like write knitting patterns, that'd be great. Cause that's the part I don't want to do, <laughs> you know, like some sort of intelligence, data science, you know, automated something or other just to grade patterns. That'd be great. But since I can't do that, I think I just got to stick with the good old Excel spreadsheets and trying to figure it out myself. And then obviously sending it to a tech editor and, and all that. And then you got to take the photos and do the test knitting. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and half the time I don't make the money back that I put into it, honestly. You know, I, I'm not, you know, a, a famous knitwear designer. So, you know, but it's just the fun of it. It's just so fun to create the patterns. So, um, yeah, some of the heavy lifting of editing and and all of that and grading and and all that comes with it is is just part of the process but it's not my favorite part I will say so the only other thing that I think is really on my to-do list this year and I'm sure other things will come up and I'll be inspired to make other uh, garments I really want to make a tank top that I just love and want to wear all the time I'm gonna add an i-cord edge on my design 
and maybe I'll like it and wear it a little bit more than I do now. Uh, but there are some camisole number one or two, I don't know, my favorite things knitwear maybe designed that. Uh, there's just a couple of tank tops that I, that I kind of have my eye on for the summer. But the only other thing that I feel like I really want to make this year is a sweater for my husband. So I pulled out my Alice Starmore and I can't remember a couple of other books, but if anybody is watching this and you are a knitter who has uh, made a men's sweater that your, you know, your man loved, uh, let me know because I would love to find a really great sweater for kind of a bigger guy. So yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of knitting because <laughs> my husband is a big guy, a uh, big, strong guy, his dad used to say. Um, but yeah, I think I want to, I want to make him a sweater. He's knit worthy and I can't believe I've made so many sweaters for myself and he has gotten zero. I've never made him a hat, mittens, scarf, sweater, nothing. And I think he would really like to have a nice cozy sweater in the winter. So I better get on it if I'm going to make it happen. Maybe I can make it though in the summer for that next, that coming fall winter season, next fall winter. So that could be something that works. So yeah, those are my knitting plans for 2024. What are you making? That is something I would love to know. What is it that is on your horizon uh, for this year in your knits? Like, what are you going to make? And have you made a sweater? Are you sweater curious? Do you not knit sweaters? I mostly knit garments and sweaters. I'm not a sock knitter. I aspire to be one. And I do have a couple of socks that I need to finish and some to cast on. So maybe there's going to be some socks thrown into the mix here because it's nice to make something big and then have a little something in between that's like a quick knit and and can give you I don't know just get that satisfaction of like whipping something out quick and then get yourself back into a garment <laughs> that's at least that's how it is for me so yeah, there might be an Oslo hat or, or some petite knit hat that is in my future this year as well. But we shall see. What are you going to make? That's what I want to know. And thank you so much for being here. That is it, I believe. And I am so excited. I'm going to go walk the dogs, I think. Then go sit on the couch, work on my brioche wrap because I can't stop knitting on that thing. There's something about the combination of brioche because I this is my first time really doing a full brioche project and I'm designing it at the same time. So the creative juices are flowing, the brioche and learning a new technique is going on, the color changing yarn marled and by itself and with mohair. There's just a lot happening for me <laughs> in this project and it is bringing me life in these dark cold winter months bringing me life people so I am so happy about that and then one other thing have you guys followed oh my gosh I'm gonna pull it up on my phone you know what you're welcome ahead of time you are welcome ahead of time because you are gonna love this podcast there name is two pearls in a pod how cute is that name two peas in a pod two pearls in a pod come on they are so equally into knitting like they are just both obsessed with knitting as much as i am and they're just so excited about every project and um talking about what's next and looking at yarn and buying yarn and they make a lot of petite knit patterns so if you love petite knit this check out this podcast. So it started with Sarah and she's the one with the red hair and she did two podcasts by herself. And then she, then her friend came and wanted to be a guest and then she just stayed and they are, their dynamic is very fun. And they both make, like I said, a ton of petite knit patterns and they're really fun and funny and 
uh, have great energy. So yeah, two pearls in a pod. You're welcome ahead of time. Enjoy. They're from Melbourne, Australia. And yeah, they just are super fun. And I, I know you're going to love them. So check it out. And I will see you next time. Bye.